I recently took a leave of absence from my professional job as a dentist. I had been planning to retire in my 30s for a while and now I finally have the option to do so. And here is how it all happened. A massive thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. You guys know I love reading and honestly I cannot imagine what my life would look like now if it wasn't for the good books I came across. A lot of people tell me, well, I just don't have the time to read. And this is why Blinkist is such an awesome app. I found the book, 168 hours on it. This is a fantastic book. I love that it's really inspiring, but also quite realistic. The author, Laura, doesn't tell you you can do absolutely everything, but how to do more of what you value. Blinkist consolidates the books into blinks, which are the key ideas, and you can either listen to the blinks or read them. This way, you can get the powerful insights and go through the books in just 15 minutes. I love that whenever I come across a book that I really enjoy, I can always revisit the book for inspirations without having to actually go through the entire book again. Blinkist offers over 5,500 non-fiction titles in 27 categories and I'm really excited to explore the many good books and podcasts out there. Another amazing thing about Blinkist is that you can share your premium subscription with another person without having to pay more using the Blinkist Connect. This is something I haven't seen any other services do. I now share my plan with my husband. And don't worry, even if you share your premium plan, you will have two separate accounts and you can choose what to share with the other person. If you use the link down below, you can try out Blinkist completely for free for seven days. And it will also give you 25% off the premium plan. And don't forget, you are getting two subscriptions for the price of one. I never thought early retirement was possible until I stumbled across YouTube videos about it. And I started reading more and more recommended books about this topic. To be honest, I have no idea why schools never teach us about this topic because it's something that affects every single one of us. Money is not everything, but it has such a profound impact on our everyday lives. I remember reading books like Millionaire Teacher and A Simple Path to Wealth and realized how little financial literacy I had. So I continued dipping into it more and I started seeing the different options of how my life could pan out. It was a revelation because I realized I didn't have to follow the script handed to me by society i.e. working really hard, spending everything, and hopefully retiring in my 60s. I started being really intentional about my expenses, and I took on a completely different perspective about shopping. My husband saw the changes in me, and he started being really intentional as well, and things started to really compound. From there, we started educating ourselves about investing for the future with books like A Random Walk, down Wall Street, and that's when our priority really shifted. With every paycheck, we make sure to invest first before anything else. That went on for years, and it's interesting how when you have leverage, things start to work in your favor. For example, instead of saying yes to everything, I set my boundaries at work. I no longer work on the weekends. I didn't take on any tasks just to impress my boss, and I walk away when things became toxic. I could certainly see for myself that things were changing for the better, but I also knew I had so much more to learn and explore. There was a time in my life where things were really chaotic. I had a full-time job, I was doing a master degree, my little boy was a lot younger then, and I was making YouTube videos. So I started reading books about productivity and time management. And the two books that really helped me are Eat the Frog by Tracy Bryan and The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. 
There's a saying in my industry that goes, dentists make a healthy living, but they are time poor. And I cannot agree with that more. However, the more I read, the more I realized I had more control over my time than I thought. I didn't have to just let the motions carry me along. I can decide when to wake up in the morning, how to start my day, cut down on TV, do meal planning, go to bed early instead of scrolling on Instagram. This might sound tedious, but our lives are a sum of our small daily actions. Being intentional with my time allowed me to work on my YouTube videos in the evening without having to compromise on my day job or family time. I kept doing that for years, and I'm glad to say I now have a community of some of the most amazing people, and I also have the opportunity to work with brands that I know can add values to our lives. I also spend quite a bit of time reading about minimalism, and one book that I've recommended over and over again is Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki. This book changed the way I look at all my possessions. I started curating everything in my house, downsizing my wardrobe heavily, and selling a lot of luxury items and designer handbags that I didn't use much, and I felt so much lighter. The decluttering experience was captivating for me because I always thought happiness was about having more and more of everything. For the first time in my life, I finally believed the saying of less is more. Now, I often say there's a massive difference between wanting to have less and feeling like you should have less. My personal experience tells me if you go by the first formula, you will have no trouble doing low buy consistently. Around that time, I started doing a lot of journaling and soul searching, and I realized Beyond designer handbags and shopping, I value other things so much more, such as having the flexibility of my time, embracing my creativity, and being available for my family. With that in mind, early retirement didn't seem that scary anymore. I still enjoy nice things, but seeing I already have a curated collection, I'm feeling really content and blessed. I also started thinking a lot about the concept of time. In the shortness of life, Seneca said, you wouldn't let anyone steal your property, but you consistently let people steal your time. That really hit home for me. I used to watch a lot of TV and I would spend hours scrolling on Instagram. And then I told myself that I had no time to read, exercise or meditate. Having this realization was another turning point for me because that's when I started to really respect my time. I now feel quite comfortable saying no to commitments or social events that I'm not keen about because it means I'm reserving that time for myself to make my own dream happen. In life, we are always having to make choices. I mean, I can either go window shopping for hours when I actually have nothing to buy, or I can spend that time with my family in the garden, or I can take an online course to learn how to make better videos. Acknowledging that my time is finite is actually the main reason why I started to seriously consider about early retirement. At the end of my journey, I really don't think I wish I had worked harder or got a longer professional title. Regardless of what happens from here, I think I'll thank myself for taking the leap of faith and for staying true to myself. In Your Money or Your Life, Vicky Robin talked about how every purchase we make represents how we spend our life energy. So let's say if your hourly wage is $50, buying a t-shirt that costs $500 means you're spending 10 hours of your life to buy that t-shirt. And if you consider the average human lifespan is only 4,000 weeks, you will think twice before buying anything. But it also means you will value what you choose to buy. 
I now also prefer to spend on experiences rather than always wanting to expand my collections endlessly. As someone who used to get validation from buying expensive things, I never quite bought the idea that spending on experiences produced happiness that's a lot more long-lasting, even though a lot of studies have supported the finding. I highly recommend the book Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. He talks about why we should collect memories and not things. Now that I'm on my break, I feel like I'm living again. We've planned a few trips this year and even having something to look forward to makes me really happy. In the past, I used to leave all the planning to my husband because I had so much on my plate, but now I'm a lot more engaged and I feel like that itself is part of the experience. Something else that reading has taught me is the importance of surrounding ourselves with good vibes, positivity, and inspiring people. Like Darren Hardy said in The Compound Effect, there are many things happening in the world right now, and you can either choose to focus on the bad news, disasters, and disputes, or you can focus on the many good things that are also happening right now. In fact, try this for yourself. Spend the whole day listening to podcasts, blinkers, and TED Talk, and you'll feel very driven and that anything is possible. Or you can listen to the news all day and feel like the world is ending. This is why I'm always looking for inspirations from amazing people through reading because I know when I expose myself to the right things, it helps me design a life that I love living. I hope you enjoyed this video because I really want my content to be more wholesome. I hope we all get to enjoy some nice things while taking good care of ourselves and living an intentional life. Thank you to Blinkist again for sponsoring this video and don't forget to use the link to subscribe. It really is a fantastic service. Take care and I will see you soon.